Jonas Stenstrom here with this weekly. The United Nations World Water Day is this week, and that means it's our chance to look at how each of us is tied to this thing we know as water. This last month, Rob and I had a chance to do a trip of a lifetime, kayaking the Grand Canyon, all 225 miles of it. The power of this water is just awe-inspiring. There's just so much water flowing down this river. In fact, right now, about 25,000 cubic feet of water is passing by us every second. But as a whole, the water in this river, of course, only represents a small fraction of the available water we have on the planet. I mean, you've probably seen this before. 97% of the planet's water is salt water. Of the remaining 3%, 70% of that is frozen in ice caps, and most of the rest of that is underground. The water in the form of this raging river is only a fraction of a percent of our available water. I must say, doing a trip like this made me think about water in a new way, realizing how easy it is for me to get water at home. For instance, there we are having to purify our water before drinking it. Scientists say that everyone needs between 5 to 15 gallons of clean water per person per day. And on a grueling trip like this, I use far less than that, especially when it came to bathing. You don't want to go into that water uh, unless you really have to. Yeah, you got it. That water is not heated, I can tell you that. Given that I filtered all of my drinking water, I know that I was probably using a few gallons per day. But here's the kicker. Statistics say that the average person in the developed world uses about 100 gallons of water per day. And after spending so much time on the river, that statistics blew my mind. But it also made me think, what does that mean? And does it really even matter? That question might be best answered by first factoring in where you live in the world. I, for instance, live in Sweden, and water shore is one of the things we have plenty of. With less than 10 million people in the whole country, yeah, we could probably take a five hour shower and still be fine. But that doesn't mean I don't think about water usage. Take the water use of the Colorado River, for instance. There's just, just so, so much, much water, water flowing, flowing down, down this river. river. It goes right through the desert southwest. Large cities like Las Vegas need that water. And then there's agricultural demand. All in all, more than 30 million people are now depending on the water from the Colorado River. In fact, between the people using it for drinking water and agriculture, the water in this mighty river now doesn't even reach the ocean most of the time. Less water being flushed into the ocean has also resulted in a lot of sea life at the mouth of the river disappearing. A good note though is that with new and improved systems that use the water from the Colorado River more efficiently could hopefully someday result in the river connecting with the ocean again. The idea for this week is not to blame anyone, just to start the conversation. How can we use water in the best and most efficient way with the resources that we have to make sure everyone has access to clean water? And that's the whole purpose of the World Water Day. I have for several years been well connected with water organizations around the world and I know everyone's really interested to hear your comments. So please put your comments and ideas in the comment box below and that's it for this week. Unteam Science is a collaborative effort and we have a bunch of videos for you guys to watch and make sure you subscribe to our channel for new videos every week. 